Well, welcome back everybody to Predagast Plays. It's episode four. And in this one, I'm going to show you the thinking and plotting of me building Captain Blood's Escape, the signature ride here in Papillon Gardens. We'll show you the building of the castle that the coaster zooms around, and we'll show you the theming scheme. I hope you enjoy it, and later on in my next episode, I'll actually show you a cinematic and point of view of what I believe is my best ride to date. Thanks for watching, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. I'll be in and out of the commentary as the video plays. Here you see me doubling the size of my original castle. I'm not actually adding too much decoration at the moment as I want a whole fire on that till the coast is built around and through. This will give me a chance to actually see where needs decoration and where doesn't. I do really wish I hadn't built quite so close to the edge of the map as that did make it a little bit problematic. It was really annoying me that I'd made such a huge box-like structure so I had to have, add the uh, wooden walkways on just to give a little bit of shape to the design because as I say it was really beginning to annoy me. Just topped it off and then it was time to remember that you can duplicate an entire building and I thought ah Flip this by 180, pop it on the other side, and I can save a lot of time. Which I certainly did. Although it created a few problems in filling up the gaps in between the towers, as they were difficult to see. Also, with the ground undulating the way it did, I had to go around and ensure that the buildings were actually sitting on the ground and not floating in the air. As you'll see later on in the video, Actually, they were floating in places I hadn't realised. I can't wait for terraforming to arrive in whichever alpha patch that is. So for now, the trusty stones came out. I'm absolutely useless with these and find it very difficult to make anything that looks remotely lifelike. But actually they don't look too bad once I add a bit of greenery and just to make them look a little bit alive. I'm a big fan of the rock skull and I love illuminating it from inside. This time I decided I'd hide one of the treasure chests inside once and then once I illuminated it, should we catch it at the right angle from anywhere in the park, we'll realise that Captain Blood has actually buried some of his treasure and hidden it nicely. Time to start decorating. As I've said many times, uh, I'm no architect, I'm not very good with uh, scenery, or, or building design I should say. But I don't think it turned out too bad, and uh, I am beginning to play with mixing shapes and seeing what I can do with them. Uh, getting better with the design tools each and every time I use another prop. just want to say a big thank you to Ross Budgen for the fantastic soundtrack. In the description of this video I have placed a link to his channel where you can go and have a look at some of his amazing uh, royalty free music that's available for use. So once again big thanks Ross, this soundtrack is awesome.
here I've begun work on one of four race platforms uh, to fill the gap in front of the castle. I wanted to create an, a display area where I could make some nice scenery designs uh, and also to give somewhere for the pathways to meander through and to give a little bit of uh, height and depth to the structure I was completing. Here I move away from the main castle structure. I wanted to make the two identical buildings that could go on either side to create some fortress type imposing looking battlements. Uh, I also made it separately as I do wish to use this in the area of the Kraken battle that's featured in the raid. Uh, and once again I was able to duplicate and just place this in position on the opposite side of the park. So I actually do add a bit more life to this piece so that uh, when I duplicate it's all there already, a bit of interior lighting and just finishing off the top nicely again with those uh, sticky out wooden battlements and there's something very satisfying about putting the roof on a building I find. And I'm still totally in love with all the lighting effects and scenery items. And my scenery placement's definitely getting much better and looking a bit more lifelike. Hurrah for that! Additional battlements complete. There they are in place. Let's just top it off with a nice little bell tower. As yet, I've not started to experience any lag, but I don't use anywhere near the amount of uh, scenery pieces that some of the YouTube builders have been using uh, that have been experiencing lag. For every one piece I use, they're using 200. They have so much patience and I'm uh, in awe. Uh, snappy Pancakes and Silver Act, wow. The stuff they're coming up with is amazing. And I'm very happy now I've mastered the Control D shortcut, allowing you to stay on exactly the same level and make duplicates as you go. Very happy that I know how to do that now. Okay, so the coast is built. I want to keep the uh, ride layout actually a surprise for the uh, cinematic and the point of view. But uh, as everyone should do, if you build through anything, add arches or add something repetitive and then as your car goes through it, it causes the effect of additional speed. And it really is picked up very, very well indeed on the coaster cam. Let's duplicate that building again on the return section of my ride. This is where uh, Captain Blood and his crew 
meet and defeat the Kraken. And of course, by doing so, earn their pardon and all the additional treasures and riches that come with it. Is it a bit sad that I've made a story up for the ride? You tell me. Leave your comments. Uh, tell me what you think of the story. There we go. Captain Blood was actually a character played by Errol Flynn in a movie. And I've uh, had a look at the synopsis and altered the story slightly. So we're starting work now on the actual coaster station. Again, lots of arches or repetitions in the coaster station actually enhance the braking sensation on the coaster cam as well. Don't forget your internal lighting effects, folks. I tended to do so, and of course, then your coaster cam is incredibly dark. Lesson learnt, Mr. Predagast. With the inside of the station complete, it's time to start working on the outside and expanding the building outwards. The exit line itself is inside the building, with the queuing area staying well outside. As you can see, I'm just boxing in the exit uh, with some nice little detailing and a few bits of lighting just to give some atmosphere for your peep cam as you're exiting. Some things just work and some things don't. I make several attempts now of uh, using something a little bit different to uh, enclose my pathway, but it doesn't work. So they have to go. But not before trying several times. And you'll notice I'm still finding places where due to the landscape I'm still not touching the ground. Hopefully we've got them all. Why I would possibly have thought the wooden walls would work there I'll never know.
more attempts to create a very different angled roof, but uh, once again, to no avail. So I gave up. I will work it out one day. Until then, I'll keep trying, but off camera. Well, I believe the left-hand side of this structure is becoming nicely alive now. Time to add just a little bit of subtle lighting where I can. But there again, whilst nowhere near in the quality of other people, other players that are superb. I do think this is most definitely my best construction yet. Notice that little trick I saw and I've used that to use something to create an angled line uh, and use it as the base for putting your windows in. Makes it look like an authentic staircase on the inside when you remove those angled pieces away again. Okay, just topping off and some interest on the roofs that can be seen from the coaster cars. And here's the entrance, which we're just dressing out. Some nice treasure chests on one side. And we're going to give a flower bed effect to this side of the queue line. Time to address that ugly, ugly ticket booth. I do hope we'll have some options rather than that yellow monstrosity when uh, we have a few more items added into the game. But uh, just something a little bit simple, a small walkthrough, a sort of gateway arch as such into the grounds of our fortress. Covering up these little lights, all the lighting effects actually show through all the other pieces of scenery. Uh, it works rather nicely, a great way of hiding them. And there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that and in the next episode I'll actually be showing you the cinematic, the point of view, where I'll actually reveal the Kraken area of the ride to you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, please please comment, uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I do like listening and re listening, reading your comments, any constructive criticism I'll happily accept. 
and once again a big thanks to Ross Budgen for this amazing soundtrack. So until episode 5 from Predagast, take care! <laughs> <laughs>